We've all been there. You've had a hard day at work and the boss has been busting your chops. So what better way to unwind than sticking on your favourite beat em up and busting someone else's? Round one. Fight! Fight. As you land the punches, kicks and throws, all thoughts of budget reports, customer complaints and useless technical support departments start to fade away. A few rounds in and now you're really getting into it. Someone's going to get a hide in today. And then it happens, that dreaded question. Haven't you got something we can both play? So there's the rub. How'd you get your non-gaming girlfriend to join in your favourite hobby without getting bored senseless on gaming fluff like Viva Piñata or Animal Crossing? Well over the next few shows I'll try and guide you through some of the cooperative gaming experiences out there in search of a game that gamers and non-gamers can enjoy together. Starting with Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire on the PS2. Harry Potter and his friends Ron Weasley and Hermione Granger travelled by port key to the Quidditch World Cup final where they saw Ireland defeat Bulgaria. Later that night, a gang of Death Eaters, followers of Lord Voldemort, rampaged across the campsite. Arthur Weasley sent Harry, Ron and Hermione back to the port key. Come on! Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire from EA follows the path of the movie rather than the book and allows up to three players to choose one of the famous teenage do-gooders on their battle against he who must not be named. The first level has Harry, Ron and Hermione running from the campground outside the Quidditch World Cup to reach the port key, which is basically a teleport in the form of a dirty old boot. Along the way, all manner of evil creatures attempt to halt your progress and random experimentation of the buttons reveal a few spells yeah. that can easily see them on. Yeah. Dad. We all need to cast Wingardium Leviosa on that rock. Further instructions are given along the way by Arthur Weasley, and new skills are learned such as lifting heavy objects and pushing and pulling obstacles like trees and gates. Move the rock out of the way. Some of the obstacles require cooperation between the three characters, though it's sometimes frustratingly difficult to get a computer control character to do what you need without repositioning your character or trying to push them in the direction you require. However, the biggest difficulty is actually seeing what's going on, as the screen is so dark you often find yourself walking into trees and bushes like an episode of Mr. Magoo in the jungle. Come on, you two! If you do manage to fumble your way through the dark to the port key, Harry and co head back to school and we're treated to some more scene setting and some of Stephen Fry's very nice voice acting. A new turn at Hogwarts. Hogwarts will this year play host to the Triwizard Tournament. Harry, Ron and Hermione met Mad-Eye Moody for an extra Defense Against the Dark Arts lesson. Right, now you need to jinx it. Make sure you pick up the blue beans. It's in these lessons that you learn the various buttons for standard spell casting. However, it feels a little late in the proceedings to be going through a tutorial level, so they feel more of a chore than providing any real fun. With the tutorial level over, you're now treated to what I can only describe as a bamboozling level up process that after about hours of play I'm still completely clueless about. Even worse than the levelling though is a card collecting part to the game. The overcomplicated way this has been implemented probably renders it useless to young children and plain annoying to everybody else. Only one champion can win the Triwizard Tournament and that champion must survive three very dangerous times. Your three champions are Victor Crump, Fleur Delacour, and lastly, Cedric Diggory.
but before you can get to the excitement of the Triwizard Tournament, you have many collecting and puzzling tests to complete. They start off easy, requiring actions such as putting out fires and killing dungbugs or salamanders, but as the levels go on, the difficulty seems to come from more finicky controls rather than the puzzles requiring more thought. Overall, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire is a decent game that lets two or three friends work together in a mildly entertaining manner, but rarely rises above that and can only really be recommended if you're a fan of the source material. In contrast to the dark nature of the first game, this next game has its roots in slapstick comedy and fairy tales. Newlywed fever continued to rise in the swamp, and dear Fiona couldn't be happier. Her parents invited her and Shrek to far, far away so they could meet the handsome man she married. While packing for their long journey, Shrek realized he still needed some essentials for the trip. Look, I don't want to be late. Then I need help collecting eyeballs. It'll be a long journey, and nobody wants to see me hungry. Why don't we just get some parfait? You know, ones with whipped cream? Oh, I love whipped cream. Ogres eat nature, not parfaits. Be sure to collect all of the eyeballs for snacks on your trip. Shrek 2 from Activision captures the humour of the animated movies perfectly, and although just like the Harry Potter game, the voices of the characters are not the same actors from the films, they're great impressions and it's easy to forget that it isn't Eddie Murphy cracking jokes as the lovable donkey. Initially controlling Shrek, Fiona, Donkey or Gingerbread Man, up to four people can play the game, and each character has its own uses. This means that if there is less than four of you participating, it will be necessary to switch between the characters, though this is effortless and the large character avatars make it clear who is who. The game is made up of exploring the fairy tale world and carrying out the numerous tasks that its weird and wonderful inhabitants give you. Many thanks to you. <coughs> Could you rescue my six brothers? The graphics are very colourful and represent the various areas extremely well. Each character has a large number of individual animations, such as Fiona's handstand lever pulling and Gingerbread Man's candy cane walking stick. This gives character to the game and it's these small touches that will keep a smile on your face right through playing the game. Boy, the, gods. the camera angle can get annoying though and you'll often find yourself heading one way and somebody else going the other. This causes the camera to pan out to a level where it's difficult to see what's going on and on some occasions a computer controlled character can even get stuck, causing you to traipse back to where they are to allow them to catch up. There once was a motley crew who asked if I would let them through. I'll open the gate for you and your mates if you will bring me fairy. Although clues are never far away, the game has an amusing habit of letting you fail before it helps you out. Like in this task where you're chasing fairies that can't be caught, until you realise that Fiona has a bullet time slowdown effect at her disposal. Press the special button to slow down time with Fiona, then touch all the fairies to collect them. Other fairy tale characters join in the fun, and at different parts in the game you'll control ten different creatures, including Puss in Boots and Feisty Little Red. Good job, guys. I'll be along to meet you at Grandma's house in a sec. Shrek 2 is a wonderful game that sets the controls, humour and difficulty at a level that will appeal to the widest audience. For my money, it's one of the best cooperative games available, and considering you can get it for about a fiver, it should have a home in everyone's collection. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Fare thee well, my hero! So there you have it. At the end of our first co-op head-to-head, -head, Specky Potter's been thoroughly stomped by a big green swamp monster, and no manner of spells, wand work or smart arsiness can save him. Shrek 2 was just too strong on all fronts, and gets itself the first co-op game in seal of approval.